I'll just start off by saying that um, we're excited to be out here today. Another season of Virginia baseball. Um, finally got the snow off the field and we'll have our first inner squad scrimmage on the field today. Um, so we're excited about the upcoming season. Um, looking forward to seeing our club grow. Uh, certainly lost a lot off last year's team, um, both position player wise and pitching, but I think that there's really good talent and skill on this club. I think we just need to grow and and have some guys uh, get some very, very valuable experience. But I think the talent is um, is very, very good and looking forward to, you know, the season starting here in a little bit over two weeks. Some of your players said that the lessons they learned last year was uh... If you got back in a, in a big hole like you did, right. anything's possible. But how important is it to not get into a hole like that? Well, I mean, certainly what we did last year, being 4-12 and 12 in the league after 16 games, you do not want to put yourself in that situation. Um, but it's credit to them for them climbing out of it and doing what they do did and accomplished at the end of the year. So there's there's learns from that that um, you know certainly you need to be ready to go out of the gate and you need to take care of business early. Um, we actually last this last Saturday night had a, a ring ceremony where we presented our players from last year's team uh, their College World Series rings and, and I addressed that and talked a lot about that about what it takes to win a series in this league and what it takes if you want to win the league in the regular season and and um, you know part of that is not to get too far behind in, in the league and so uh, hopefully the guys that are back learned that lesson last year we can get, get off to a little bit better start. What are some of the nuances of being an everyday catcher that Kyle is yeah. still kind of working on? Yeah, there's there's a lot that goes into being a, a top catcher in, in this league and in this level of college baseball. Kyle Teal is uh, as talented and as skilled as a player that we've had back there in my time there. I mean, he can really throw. He's very, very athletic. He reminds me of somebody that's like a shortstop that you transition to, sh um, to catcher. He's that athletic back there, be able to pick balls and throw and things like that. That said, there's certain fundamentals that you consistently need to bring. And he have, hasn't had to do that much at this level yet. So that challenge is in front of him of running a pitching staff. I mean, you could stand on the field and be skilled and really throw behind the plate, but every pitch counts. You get that runner at third base and showing those pitchers that you can block that ball in the dirt and they can throw that slider down there and every time you're going to block it and keep it in front of you. Things like that. Um, you know, I, I've told him many times that you're you're never going to drive in as many runs as you can potentially give up in that position. And, you know, the two most important positions on the field are that guy on the mound and that guy that's catching him. How, I mean, his work yeah. ethic. Yeah. You see that he's grinding to get better every day? Kyle Teal loves to play the game of baseball. I love his spirit. I talked about it last year. It is really, really refreshing. I mean, he brings it every day, and his energy is really, really good. Uh, that said, sometimes you got to rein that in a little bit because you don't want to be too out of control in that position. Poise in that position is really, really important, and that's something that I think is learned and trained over time and through experience. So he's going to do something things early on that you're going to be like, wow, that that's a pretty impressive. And there's going to be times that he's going to need to learn that he needs to be more consistent. And I'm excited to see him go through that. You talk about the talent that y'all lost. How important is it for this freshman group? Well, the, the first year group that's here and the, and the transfer pitchers, it, it's critical that they make an impact. It, at this level at college baseball, you know, f first year players have to make an immediate impact. Because you lose so many players to the Major League Baseball draft after three years, you're always going to be young to a certain degree every year. So every year, whether it's on the mound or position player-wise, we're going to need guys to emerge and step forward. Just like Teal and Geloff did last year for us, we're going to need that out of some freshman position players. And I'll tell you, we got a handful of transfer arms that I think all are going to make significant impacts on our, on our pitching staff. Speaking of that, the guy said Jay got to throw for the first time yesterday. What have been your initial impressions of him here in this environment? Uh, Jake Barry? Oh, no, oh, Jay. Oh, you say Jay. I'm sorry. Um, well, I've been very impressed with Jay Wolfork. I, I got a chance to see him enough in high school to know what he's capable of doing. Um, he was a very highly thought of pitcher uh, out of high school. We were ecstatic that 
you know, that he decided to come here, and he's going to make a real impact f uh, for us on the mound. Don't know what role yet. We're still trying to figure it out, that out. It's new for him. He got a little bit of a late start than other guys uh, just because of preparation for the, you know, bowl game and things like that. All of our pitchers had started their throwing program three weeks before he did. Um, so that said, I think – I think he's got incredible poise. He showed that in the Notre Dame game and every games that he's had opportunity to. And he's got a really, really good arm. And I think he's going to really do some great things for us pitching-wise. You mentioned watching him play yeah. football last year. I mean, how yeah. much did you just watch what he did out there and kind of see how that relates to going into baseball? Well, I think there's a, a, a direct correlation of what he does out on the football field and playing the position he does, and then to be able to do it in baseball. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna pitch in, in the ACC in baseball, and the game's on the line, you better you better have poise, you better have to skill, but you better be able to handle the moment. And uh, he proved this year when his opportunities under center in football that uh, he can handle the moment. And so I'm just impressed with him. He's, uh, he's an even keel, highly competitive kid that I think is going to do some really good things. What's the plan for him just in terms of dividing his time between baseball and football? Well, the plan for Jay is um, – that he is going to just be a baseball player until the beginning of March. And then uh, Coach Elliott and I have, have communicated on a handful of times regarding Jay. Um, he really believes that that he wants Jay Wolfork to have the full experience here in playing both sports. Jay can do it. And so once we get into March, there's going to be a reassessment of how he's going to be handled. Um, he's still going to be able to play baseball, but it's just going to be different how he's going to have to manage it day to day on what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Tell us about your uh, transfer pitchers. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, I think you all know that we lost a considerable amount of innings off last year's team from the pitching standpoint, 70% uh, of them uh, to be about exact. And so, you know, not only would there need to be maybe a couple of first years come in to help on the mound, I felt like that there would need to be some transfers that would need to come in to immediately impact us. And th there sure is. Uh, Brian Gursky is a left-handed pitcher that's a transfer from the University of Southern California that I really like. He had a fantastic fall. Dylan Bowers is a big physical right-handed pitcher that's going to help us out of our bullpen. Will Gerdes is a transfer from, <clears throat> from Columbia that graduated from Columbia that, that I think is going to do some terrific things as well. There's a junior college transfer pitcher Joe Maselli that has a really good arm and a good slider so you know those guys um, there's a there's a guy from Arizona by the name of Mason Dillo that's uh, lagging behind the other ones because he had a knee issue coming out of the summer uh, so he'll be a little bit behind the other guys but um, you know I, I think all of them have experience They've done it at a different level or in a different program. They've got a little bit more maturity and understanding of what it takes to get outs in college baseball than a lot of 18-year-olds do. So uh, we're going to look for them to really make significant contributions. With uh, Devin, uh, yeah. how's his, his, I guess, reacclimation pitching more uh, going? Yeah, well, we are. Um, Devin Ortiz is going to take a much more active role for us pitching-wise this year than he ever has in his career. He showed last year in the Old Dominion game in the regional final what he's potentially capable of doing in that start. Uh, so he's been preparing uh, potentially as a starter in the, in the entire preseason. It's going very well. Um, he's building his endurance up from his arm and standpoint. Point. Um, I've, we've always liked him on the mound. We recruited him as a dual player. We just needed him in a, as a position player, a certain level. So we're going to look at him pitching a lot, uh, potentially as also as the DH. Maybe an outside shot at first base, but really want to focus on the pitching and then having him swing the bat for us potentially in the DH. How does Wyatt build off of what he did in the post? Yeah, well, uh, Matt Wyatt, as you know, I mean, we would not have made it to Omaha and did what we did without Matt Wyatt and his development as a pitcher. He, uh, after that, he went and pitched for team. He was invited to pitch for Team USA, um, certainly gained some confidence from wearing that uniform. And so he didn't pitch this fall. There's certain guys that we shut down. He didn't pitch. Um, you know, I, I'm looking for a breakout year with him. I mean, he's, he's as talented as anybody we have. And what he did last year to step up for this team uh, shows what he's capable of doing. He's going to certainly take on a much more bigger and expanded role right out of the gate. And are you uh, 
anticipating Savino and Neek as starters as well? Yeah, they, uh, we're looking at both of those guys. Um, they're starting in a normal type of a rotation type thing. And so we're looking at, at them, maybe a couple of the transfers, um, you know, Ortiz. Uh, Jake Barry has been throwing the ball very well. He had a nice fall for us. He's a second year that got a little bit of time last year, but he's, he's grown, not grown height-wise. I mean, he's already whatever, 6'10 or something. But uh, um, he's just continued to mature, and I think he's going to help out a lot too as well as other guys. Do you have a plan for Wyatt yet? I don't. No, I don't. Um, you know, you know. Sometimes what we start out early isn't necessarily what we always continue because the guys aren't built up to go seven innings and things like that. So sometimes we put guys in maybe relief roles the first couple of weekends to win the game in front of you and then kind of see how it sorts out. So. How do you balance the experiences from a World Series run last year, but also going into a clean new slate this year and not looking too far in the past? Yeah, well, I, I do think, and this is why last Saturday we had this ring ceremony to recognize our guys that were on the team last year. I think that's important, right? You need to celebrate success. That said, on the same night, we actually turned the page to the 2022 season. We said, okay, we're going to put that in a nice box, and then we're going to turn the page. We can learn and grow a lot from what we did last year. I mean, the experience those guys had to come back, they, they learned a ton of what it takes to be successful at this level. So that's what we're going to, you know, take from last year, knowing that, hey, they have a pretty good idea of what it takes to get to Omaha, to have a championship team. And hopefully the guys that are back learn from that and they can apply that to this year. What's the biggest adjustment it takes from a first year coming in playing travel ball to ACC baseball? The biggest adjustment that a you know 18 year old makes coming into this level of baseball is the speed of the game. Everybody runs faster; it just moves quicker, right? And so, how quickly to the, do they adapt to that, right? On a consistent basis, everybody throws harder. Everybody runs. To, if you're an infielder, everybody runs to first base consistently faster. So it just moves quicker. Right. Um, so that's the biggest adjustments that, that I've seen in the ones that can handle that um, typically make the, 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 the biggest leap. But I will tell you what we have transitioned to over the last three or four years, and that is every one of our position players that is an incoming position player. We send away to play in a collegiate summer league prior to coming here to get an extra 50 games to fast forward that speed, right? And so, for, for example, Griff O'Farrell from Richmond, he was the MVP of a collegiate summer league this summer as a high school player, right? So for 50 games this summer after high school was over, he got to pl compete against college players in the speed of the game quicker. Um, Anthony Steffen, who's a second baseman for us, Ethan Anderson, who's a catcher first baseman for us, and Justin Rubin, who's an infielder for us also. They all played in a league this summer, and their, their team was up in Vermont. I went up there to watch them play, and their team won the league championship, and uh, Ethan Anderson was the MVP of that league, or the, rated the best pro prospect. So. I was up there, they're playing against all these college guys, right? And so you see when guys do that, they start to, it starts to slow down for them a little bit, right? So. You mentioned some of those names. Who's figuring into the battle at shortstop and third base right now? Well, really, um, there are three freshmen at shortstop. Um, it is uh, Griff O'Farrell, Justin Rubin, and Tristan Shoemaker. It's going to be a freshman that's going to play there. Um, Jake Geloff and Casey Saki, another freshman, are playing uh, third base. So it's kind of, you know, open competition. We're going to leave it that way. And, and uh, I'm sure as we move along here, there will be guys that will emerge.